Hi, right, let's make a start. Excuse so yourself a moment to on the posture. Let's check your feet and so on. And well, I need to come forward. So I'm going to hit the wall otherwise. Slowly turn. Your weight comes slightly forwards. If you can get the focus of your attention just behind the balls of your feet. Softening your knees and just let your hips drop out. So that familiar combination, giving you this more open, spacious feel in the centre of your body. Something, of course, that we will want to spread up through our back and into our shoulders, hips. And... So down in, in into our legs. Now I'm going to come a bit closer so you can see more of what my, my, my knees are doing. Often there's a tendency for this to happen. This is exaggerated. This will be very obvious. You see how my knees are moving from side to side. That's a natural thing. When you turn, it's, 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 it's going to pull on your legs. So what we want to do is, as I turn, I get into the habit of just pushing my knee outwards again or some people say forwards it doesn't really matter it amounts to the same thing and the same thing on on the 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 other side it's only a very small movement it means there's a little bit of a stretch on the inside of the leg and eventually you won't get it straight away but eventually it actually begins to happen quite quite automatically so you may get a little bit of sideways movement with with your knees, but you won't get as much. And what you will feel is the muscles, particularly in the thighs, changing because obviously, if that's the natural movement for your legs, something's got to stop that. So these outer muscles will contract and so on. And so you can begin to feel how moving in the center of your body here creates a sense of movement down into your legs. You may also find that as you turn, there's a slight emphasis on the weight in the, the leg that you're turning towards. If you find it's the other way around, incidentally, if you find that you're sort of doing that and then that, that's down, usually down to some kind of tightening in your hips and your lower back. And you can gradually work to change that. But that is quite a gradual process, so don't, don't fight against it. But your weight really shouldn't move very much, but it's almost like what you feel is the, the sensation you get just before your weight moves. So it shows that the connection from the center of the body goes down as well as up. When we start learning Tai Chi, we always learn from the ground upwards. It's, it's, it's the logical, the practical way to, to learn. And that's particularly true for people who sort of try to learn a Tai Chi form. And we feet in the right position, you move the weight, you turn the center of the body and that moves the arms. It's a, a sort of step-by-step -step way of learning to do a movement. But as we get more familiar with that movement, our perspective can change a little bit to be a little bit more focused on the centre of the body, the lower down chin, the, by which I mean the area between your hips and your waist. And there's a saying in Tai Chi classic, so-called, that says that the mind is like the commander 
and your, the center of your body is like the banner, referring to the structure of an older, older style army where the commander would stand on a hill or something like that and send instructions and the banners of the army would move to a certain place and, and so on and so forth. So we, we, we feed information through into the center of the, 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 the body and the sort of instructions, if, if you like, go out from there. So it's so a more internalized movement. And it just comes with time. Once you've got past the sort of, oh, what's he doing with his legs now? Or what's he doing with his hands? Then we, we start to feel this, this, this sort of change with, within the body. Nothing should be regarded as set in stone, and nothing is, is, is linear in, in Tai Chi. So ultimately, we're talking about not one part of the body, but the whole of the body one way or another. And then raising your arms. then shake it. So I quite like using the term center. I think it can both be a, a, a label for a part of the body but also a concept um, and even an action to, in terms of centering your, your, your attention. But when we, when, when we we're, again we're more familiar with, with the movements, the sense of the center isn't necessarily a fixed location. Obviously there's a physical center to to the body. But when we talk about moving from our center, we could be talking about that whole area from the lower Danshen down in to, into our feet. Again, nothing is, is fixed, nothing is sort of set. It depends on just what you're looking for in, in the movement at any particular time. But let's go into this exercise, just rocking your weight forwards and backwards. And imagine that you're sort of straddling a ball. So the very act of sinking your hips pushes the, the, the ball downwards, or the top of the ball downwards, and we get that little bit of sort of expansion. And then you're just going forwards and backwards, and the whole of the ball, so the whole of that area, from the physical center to your feet, is actually moving as one unit. hands out just a little bit. So if there's an intent to move your weight back, that intent is fed into the ball. And the whole of that part of your body rolls forwards on the ball. At the same time, of course, sinking down onto something springy like a ball would give you a feeling of being pushed up as well, so that gives us that sensation. So then, one way or another, come to rest just behind the balls of your feet and then sinking down more. And if you do imagine sitting on the ball, then of course there'll come a point where you just naturally get pushed up. Body expanding and contracting. So you can look at all of these movements in different ways. It's a bit like looking at a piece of music or listening to a piece of music and concentrating on the rhythm or the bass line or the melody or the harmony or whatever. It's 
quite interesting to do all of that. But ultimately, what we want to do is to listen to the whole tune. So whichever way you're choosing at the moment to, to view the movement, try and just sit back from that after a little while so that what you're getting is the actual experience of the movement. And you'll, and you'll realize that all of those elements are part and parcel of the same action. I'm changing and the change itself is another if you like act of intent so one of the reasons we put so much emphasis on the the mind training element of focusing our attention is that we can begin to really make these changes in mind and body very precise and accurate and eventually get to a point where we can do it as well as be aware of other things. So if you're outside, maybe aware of noises and outside, people moving around, things moving around, and you're not cutting yourself off from them, but neither are you getting distracted by them, you're not getting pulled along by them. more time. And change. small dragon plucks the stars from the sky so again we can feel this movement from the outside or the inside not that the outside is relevant by the way but we can switch the focus of our attention and we can have this very definite up and down movement in the hip. I'm exaggerating slightly. You see, I push up, my legs get a little bit straighter, and then I drop my hips. And that gives us a very real sense of the physical links, the chain of movement to our bodies, between feet and hands, right up through one side. And that awareness should feed in to your attention. You can feel the connection between, say, for instance, your hip and your shoulder, the rib cage expanding. And eventually what you're going to do is focus on those sensations. And you can realize that the, the very act of, if you like, imagining that sensation can have a physical effect. Once again, though, it's not one, one thing. So any kind of breakdown of mind and body is ultimately not the whole story. And of course, when we establish routines, as we, we do in these classes, then they become 
automatic in their changes. And again, you start to get that sense of movement from one pattern to another. Let's do one more. And then changing. One more round. and change. And then the turn, if it's comfortable. Switch sides. And at the turn.
rowing a boat in the middle of the lake. Try and make sure that your knees don't go forwards, it's your hips going back, your back extending. And if you can't go down a long way, then don't fall sit and certainly don't compensate by allowing your knees to come forwards. Shaking the back here. It's the lower part of my back, just dropping down. Imagine the connection like pulley cords from your hips to your shoulders. So as your hips go back, it's just automatic that your shoulders will come up. So it's an action for the whole of the body from your feet to the top of your head not just one part of your body, but the whole body moving in unison. And then stand. And begin to transfer your weight. So once again, we have this idea of the ball moving. Again, I'm going to come back. I'm going to take a slightly wider stance. So again, you can see a little bit more of what's going on. What I'm trying to do is to move and keep the pelvis level. I don't want to do that. I do have a tendency to do that, by the way. If you see me doing it, <coughs> I find it easier to do this in the wider stance. Because there's a little bit more room, isn't there? Uh, now, begin to just turn in the centre of your body again. And once again, we have a situation where this movement, this turning, is going to do that to our knee. This time, however, rather than trying to rotate the knee out, when you feel that, just let the heel come off the ground. And so you move across more and you're now more over one leg so you, you go back across you get to about 60 percent of your weight and you begin to turn and it's like your weight is spiraling down and as your heel comes off there's a slight shift until you're really settled into that supporting leg and it's really important when you you do, do it that way rather than this because now you can see i'm slightly offline It reminds me a little of uh, if you were gardening and you needed to put a, 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 a cane in to support a plant or something like that, you would sort of move it around a bit, find the right place and having found the right place, you would then twist it into the ground or push it into the ground. So you find the right place and then the turning it sort of rotates downwards, it's almost like a kind of screwing action. And in the end, what we could do, of course, particularly now that our feet are turning out slightly with this exercise, take, take that idea to, to, to its kind of extreme, I suppose you, you could say, and actually the foot will come in. So the turn in here, along with the contraction on the inside of the leg, helps to bring the foot in. Again, that's something I'll come back to in a little bit later, but now going into the movement, hitting the ball in front of the shoulder. A movement that shares with 
dragon plucks the stars from the sky, this alternating extension through one side. But instead of going sort of definite to completely from one side to, to another, the two sides work together. So one side is contracting, the other is expanding. So when we come back, there's a contraction all the way through that side as well as a movement of the weight. So we can think about the, the hand hitting up. You feel an expansion there, but also when it comes down, imagine you're in water and there's a ball underneath your hand and you're trying to pull, pull or push the ball down into water. So both sides of the movement are actually quite strong feeling. And again, we feel that there's a sense of the whole body moving because the drawing back creates the energy for the pushing up and so on and so forth. You think about a wheel turning on a bicycle. The wheel isn't going up and down or forwards and backwards. It's going in all directions at once. And actually the, 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 the different directions if you like, support each other. So gradually we go beyond an awareness of simply the physical connections and the links and the movement itself. Can you imagine water moving between two sides of a YouTube or something like that, pushed down on one side or push down on one side of a seesaw and the other side comes up. Now going into the bow stance. Now I've, I've said on a number of occasions that you know, if it's not comfortable for you to face forwards, then being slightly out is 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 fine. It's it's not where we want to stay though. So I mean I'm, I say that to people so that you don't feel that you're having to sort of like strain your back or whatever. But you want to try and work towards facing straight ahead and of course what will happen then is I go forwards and this hip is pulling on that foot so what I have to do is once again move the knee out. So th the same works going backwards it's, it's, it's more subtle going backwards. So if we get the orientation right, we find that there are two ways in which our hips and if you like the direction of movement in our hips actually helps us to begin to take a step. The first way I've talked about quite a bit before, which is that you know, we, 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 we let the, the empty hip drop and if that's the back leg, then what will happen is that will um, push the knee forwards and the heel will come up and here when I go back 
if this hip, the front hip drops down like that, you see, it's got, again, that's exaggerated, but imagine that going back and what will happen is the toes will come up. It doesn't hurt to exaggerate the movements to really feel those connections. Bear in mind that it, we do want it to be more subtle. But there's also the fact that in moving away from the leg, the direction of the movement of the hip creates a pull. Again, on the inside of the leg is where I, I, I feel it, but you can probably feel it elsewhere. So I get to here, I've taken most of the weight in my front leg because the heel of the back legs come along, and there's like a thread of elastic going on the inside of the leg. And I raise the toes and I let the elastic contract. And then I push out. And as I say, if you feel it, Elsewhere in the, in the leg, that's fine. And we even, when we do this, tend to have the front foot slightly turned out. So there's lots of dynamics within your body that are actually combining to move your leg for you. And as always, that should take away or begin to take away a need to sort of throw, throw your body around just to move your leg. And shake out. And then on the other side. So that subtle awareness of the body and the subtle mechanics and the equally subtle sort of dy dynamics, the, the energy combine to get us to a point where we almost feel as though we're not making any effort. It's raising your toes and your, your heel. Or to be more accurate, the effort that we're making is quite different to the effort that we often associate with, say, taking a step, particularly when we do it slowly. It's leads some people to describe Tai Chi as effortless, but we know that it's not. It's just that the type of effort we put in is very different. And then stepping in. shake it out. And sometimes in some of the Tai Chi forms we will do things like we would take a step, a, a sort of standard step, front foot pointing forwards, and then what we would do, we would either do that or move back and turn the foot out so that that actually increases the, 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 the sort of pull on the leg and gives us the, the energy, the momentum to to, to take the step. But it works this way as well. It's just, it, it's, it's just more subtle this way. A third element, if you like, to do with, with, with the center of the body comes into play as, as well. And we see that particularly when we do the movement, scooping the sea and, and, and looking at the sky. That's this one. So we've got all this thing about you know, the pull on the hips and the hips sinking down and so on and so forth. 
the, the, still, still, still very, very much there. We don't take a step in this one, though. But it would be, I suppose you could do. It's quite, it'd be quite difficult. But what we get here is, again, let me show you, and, and I'll exaggerate, like in rowing a boat in in the middle of the lake, the hips go back, so there's this rotation in in the centre. And what we do is we let our centre of gravity sort of drop into the front foot and that pulls us forwards. So we, we actually, this is more like standard walking, we lean a little bit and we go forwards. Trouble is, of course, that can happen. So then when we're maybe three quarters of the way or whatever, we allow the hips to drop back and that brings us to the upright position and stops us brings brings the weight to 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 rest in the foot so we'll do that in 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 a few moments but we'll do some of the other standard exercises first what scooping the sea does is make explicit and it, and it, ex, it, it exaggerates something that it's going on anyway very, very, you know, there's the sense of the, the center. Remember I said about the ball, the ball rolling forwards. It's like the ball will roll forwards and then it kind of drops back slightly to, to, to settle us in. But before we look at that, let's do some of the others. So a pigeon spreads its wings. So as always, we have these three <coughs> aspects overlapping and blending the so-called three jewels or the three treasures of mind and body, energy or movement. Again, at first we may think of that as a a linear thing almost you know the intent is there the, the, it's like the thought almost is in is in the mind and that creates the movement in one way or another but but in the end it, 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 it isn't a linear thing because in the end we're looking for a space where the, those those three things don't exist as a separate entity And then fishermen cast the net. and pushing a wave And then scoop in the sea, looking at the sky. You sit back, you turn the front foot out. I'm going to change my position so maybe you can see what I'm doing a bit more clearly. On the back leg, tilt forwards and forwards and just let your body right itself and your weight settle into the foot. It's one movement. Think of 
the direction for up from the physical center of your body is being like a spokes on one side of the wheel and downwards has been like the spokes on the opposite side of the wheel. Good, and then change sides. Pigeon spreads its wings. One more time. Fisherman cast a net. So see if you can just feel as you arrive in the front foot, a little bit of a drop in the area of your hips and your lower back. So it's stopping you pulling you into the leg, the foot. A much subtler version of what we find happening when we do scoop in the sea. And then when we come to pushing away, there's this curving upwards which again we can relate to that dropping of the hips or the dropping through the hips actually because it's unlikely at this point that your hips are going to go physically down any further but as always we look to be able to feel the movement through our hips And then scoop in the sea. Just be careful of your knees and your back. So this can be a big movement, but that isn't necessarily the way to get the most out of the exercise. You sure we get the stretch, but there's probably better ways to stretch, to be honest. And if we're too focused on that, then we can miss those very subtle internal elements. And then <clears throat> so when we do um, wind blows the willows and we go from there we make the transition into dragonfly skims the water actually in some ways I think it's easier to take the the step because we're actively deliberately turning in the middle part of the body. So 
you know, um, this is this is wind blows the willows. And in fact, again, if I come a little bit closer, if you, if you watch, if you watch my knee, when I do this, you can see if I don't sort of like try and adjust the knee, it's 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 changing, it's moving, it's moving around. So that then that can actually help with this movement, and eventually with this, which just leaves us with that tricky movement. If, if you want to try it, we get to here, and then we raise with a vertical rotation of our hip joint. And again, if it's comfortable for you, we turn the leg, it's the whole of the leg turning, it's this kind of movement. But it's up in the air. So those are quite Two, two, two quite tricky movements and, and again do be, do be careful with that it's really important if you're going to try to do either of those to raise the leg or whatever that the pelvis is very stable because if the pelvis is moving around then you'll start to tighten up in in the hip again so we can we can begin to see how these very subtle movements come come together and actually enable the the more difficult movements and the more complex movements. So I I do this with my back to you so that you're 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 more more easily able to to follow. And as always, take it to whatever point is is comfortable for you. You don't sort of feel bullied into standing on one leg or if 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 you don't feel it's the the, the right thing to do. Start with your left foot forwards. Just check on the screen. Um, wind blows the willows. So this is fixed step. There's no movement of our foot. So if we think of the movement in the way that I've been describing, it really focuses our attention into the center of the body. But again, that focus of attention isn't exclusive. If we only think about what's happening in the center of the body, then nothing else will happen. Or we'll try and do something with the arms that doesn't, doesn't work well. Or so we want our attention to be able to extend outwards from the physical center, from that concept of the center, to encompass the whole of our body. And as I said earlier, you know, depending on where you are, there's things happening in the environment around you, but those as well. So the mind training element really becomes quite sort of, uh, I suppose, quite, quite developed at that point. Now, use the movement to help to raise your heel and your toes. And then stepping in, So all this sounds a little bit esoteric, consider that Tai Chi is a very practical art. 
it, these are really ideas that are, if you like, tested and de developed through the martial aspect of Tai Chi. Although it's an internal art, when we practice it as a martial art, we have to be concerned with our wider environment, like somebody trying to push you over or to hit you or something like that. Um, and, and in exactly the same way, when we walk down the road, when we go through our daily lives, we don't want to have to sort of like think, oh, yeah, now I've got to do this with my hip, now I've got to do this with our hip. We want those things to work for, for, for us without having to deliberately and consciously think about it. Just as if you ride a bike, you don't have to think, okay, I'm push the right pedal down, now I'm going to push the left pedal down. Or if you drive a car, you don't want to think, right, now I've got to move my foot off the, off the accelerator and put it on. You haven't got time quite often to, to, to think about things like that. So the solo exercises can, can, can be used to really train very important elements that we want to just be with us. Um, and not only physically either, but, but, but also, uh, as I, I often emphasize, that kind of mental process, because we're, we're also t t t talking about that space where the mind can be calmer and um, you know, we get that sense of looking out over the valley, and aware of what's going around, but not necessarily disrupted by, by it. So let's try that on the right side. Again, let me just check, and yeah, that should do. So wind blows the willows. Beginning to raise your toes and your heel. So with that link from the middle of your body, your hip, down into your foot. The leg being extended out and then contracting in and you step in. This time again, if it's comfortable for you, the foot comes in and up in one way or another, steps back, foot goes down as your hands come down, you raise the front toes as you sink in, bring the foot in, draw the foot up, step back, put the ball of the foot down, lower your hands and the heel. One more time. This time put the foot down in front, put the heel down first. Remember hips sinking down. One more time. And bring it back. Good. Rub your hands together.
tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Down to one shoulder and your arm. Right. your back. And your hips. Light on your belly, and on the upper part of your chest. So Tai Chi is an art that can get very technical. Um, and what we want to do is to use that technical knowledge, that technical insight, to in a way move beyond the, the technical side of it. We, we also say sometimes that Tai Chi is natural movements, but we take these natural movements and we, we fine tune them. You know, hitting the drum is natural, but somebody who studied the technique of drumming is going to be a better drummer. I remember once seeing some wonderful wood carvings um, where the, the, the person, the, 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 the wood carver had taken some old bog oak um, and had seen a shape within the, the, the wood and used their skill, their technical skill to actually bring that shape out. So the term that we use is to cultivate and that seems to embrace all, all, all of these things. There's only so much technical knowledge you can take at any one time though. So um, this last movement Embrace Tiger Return to Mountain. I've said a few things about it. I think coming at the end of a class, it, it's a chance for re, not reflection, because reflection implies a kind of thinking about things, but for just letting things settle. If you get, say, if, if you want to fill a glass up with, with, with water, put the glass under the tap, you turn the tap full on, water will go into the glass, but a lot of it will splash out. If you turn the tap down, slow it down, most of the water will stay in the, 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 the glass. So one aspect of Embrace Tiger Return to the Mountain, coming at the end of a, a, a session, is that it actually gives you a chance to allow whatever it is you've picked up, whatever it is you've learned, to settle. You don't have to think about it. It's either there or it's not by this time, to be honest. And if it's not there, it's fine. There'll be another opportunity to get this. You won't have picked up everything that, that, that has happened today. But one or two things will stay. And this is the chance to really let them set, set, settle into your, to your system. So embrace tiger, return to mountain. Sinking down and pushing up. Bringing your hands around, drawing in, and sinking. One more time. And stand. Check out. Thank you once again, everybody. Thanks for attending and hopefully see you soon. I think there's still some sunshine out there. So go and enjoy while you can, if you get a chance. Whatever you do, take, take good care of yourselves. Thank you.
Bye. 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 Bye.